Brady's Faith Bible Church. Uh, we wanted to, from the eldership, give you an update on um, our, our recent uh, rulings by our governor across the state as uh, COVID cases spike, hospitalizations are growing, um, and, uh, and new mandates have come out, and new mandates particularly for the church. Um, and for home home gatherings, personal home gatherings. So we wanted to um, to really update you on the position uh, that we've discussed and how it impacts our our uh, worship service gatherings as well as in home. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that hopefully uh, w you've been able to see, we've been trying to be very diligent, uh, very careful in in our care for all the body, uh, both. Um, vulnerable as well as continue on with biblical mandates. So trying to balance all those things. Um, one of the things, and I think uh, uh, Brian Sayers uh, brought it up recently in elders meeting of uh, 1 Peter 2.17, which is really trying to, uh, re represents really the, the wrestling that we go through. 1 Peter 2.17 says, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor or the king, and balancing all those things of, of one another's, our community, um, God, God himself, as well as our government authorities and really making sure that we want to balance those. Uh, you're gonna hear more on, on our position. What we wanna do is establishing our position when, uh, when all those factors are taken into consideration. Um, we are obviously, as everyone, tired of COVID. Um, that is, that is uh, no secret. Um, with toilet paper shortages looming again, all these things, this is craziness. Um, you know, Facebook and the postings and politics, it's, it's insanity from, from that perspective. But at the same time, how do we as a church respond? How do we in our own, uh, with our own, manage our own souls? So um, Dan's gonna kind of walk us through uh, just a scriptural basis and then our position of how that's gonna impact, uh, how that's gonna impact us. Yeah, uh, I wanna say greetings to Faith Bible Church. Uh, we love you and we wanna help you think through this scripturally. That's what we're aiming to do. So the governor has given two restrictions that affect us uh, that are new, but the first thing we wanna say is the governor has not restricted our gatherings. So just our neighbor, Oregon, was restricted to 25 people and an indoor gathering, and we're not restricted uh, any more than we are. We can still have up to 200 uh, in our gathering, and that's really good uh, that, that we have that. But here are the restrictions they, they have asked and mandated that we don't sing as a congregation and then because of the nature of how they have uh, talked about in-home gatherings or social gatherings it looks like we can't have people in our homes therefore people who are doing in-person growth groups now seem to be restricted in that so here's how we want to think about that and how we want to respond to it um, months and months ago when we reopened we talked about uh, what issues would qualify for civil disobedience. And one of the things we said as back as perhaps July, um, early July was um, if they tell us not to sing, then that would qualify for us as civil disobedience. And here's how we think about that. The scriptures command us to sing together. It's one of the essential parts of gathered worship. And Colossians 3.16, talking about the word of Christ dwelling in our hearts, talking about singing to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. And then in Ephesians 5, 18, 19, 20, talks about how to be filled with the Spirit, and that is by singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to one another, making melody in our hearts before the Lord. So it's quite clear from both the Old Testament in the Psalms that command us to sing as a congregation, and then the New Testament commands that it's commanded by God that we do it. And we feel like the um, the request to stop singing makes us violate that command without due cause. There's not sufficient cause, and here's what I mean by that. Uh, they're concerned that singing spreads aerosols and droplets at a larger level, uh, but the, the data that they have given to us is data that dates before mask mandates. 
and multiple studies from multiple sources. Uh, you remember, we, we don't look at just one source, we look at multiple sources around the world. We have different people looking at different places, and we have yet to find anything that justifies not singing. In fact, uh, mask wearing seems to be a very effective way to reduce uh, transmission and reduce it to no more than normal talking while wearing masks. So we feel quite safe. We're social distancing. All of the factors that, that go into it, we're doing. We have a well-ventilated room and, and so on. So we've thought about it pretty carefully. And in our, in our world, uh, our church world, we're, we're not aware of, um, of anybody who has had a spreader event where they're careful. Uh, where they're using masks and so on. So the governor's mandate m would make us normally disobey without due cause. And uh, so we, we would say we would go ahead and, and continue on. The second area we want to talk about is in-home gatherings. The governor has asked for uh, a reduction in in-home gatherings. And one of the things that's really important for us as a church is, is the ministry to each other. It's, it's as important as our gathering, in a sense, of fulfilling biblical commands, because we serve each other, we love each other, and we could walk through what we often call those one another's of scripture, serving one another, love one another, care for one another, and, and there's so many of those that without having in-person ministry, it's almost impossible to effectively do that. Now, is there concern about hospitalizations and numbers and should there be time of care? We think that, that that's a, a fair observation. So what we want to do is leave it up to you. We trust you, you're wise people, uh, you're, you're judicious about what you would do, you wouldn't want to put anybody at risk. And so we're encouraging every growth group to decide the, the best way to do those one another's. For many of you, it will remain on Zoom. You've been doing Zoom, you'll remain doing it on Zoom or some sort of platform like that. Uh, some of you will restrict uh, gatherings. Some of you may feel like you're, you're at a situation or you're in a place where you're still quite safe and you can protect everybody. Meetings at the church, for instance, uh, can still happen like they had happened before. Uh, so those people who are meeting there already, they can keep safe, they can keep social distance. So we're just going to leave it up to you as groups to decide what is best for your group to do. I have an encouragement with that is just be cautious or careful for people who are really concerned about the health of others and they feel like it's not responsible to be meeting too much. And that's fair enough. There are lots of reasons that's valid. I have one where I, I want to be able to spend time with my uh, mother who's in assisted living and I, I want to be careful for the next couple of weeks so that I can do that. You all might have reasons. We want you to be generous with each other and, and voluntarily restrict uh, freedoms for that. That's why we wear masks not because we like them, but we're voluntarily restricting freedoms for the well-being of others. So that'd be our encouragement for that. So those are the two major things. We're going to keep singing. And on Sunday, I'm going to walk through a doctrine called the spheres of authority that delineate for us how the government, the family, and the church have different responsibilities and are called to do things, uh, and, and they don't have jurisdiction over each other. So we'll talk about that on Sunday. Walt, do you have anything else? Yep. Um, w one more um, just encouragement to you as uh, Faith Bible Church. Um, the elders are not untouchable. We, we want to hear from you. Um, I, I talked to a, a just a, a faithful saint this week. Love him. He's committed to Faith Bible Church, serves here. And he's like, do you guys hate this? It's like, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, well, maybe as elders, can you just say that? I'm like, sure. We, we distaste it is distasteful this whole situation of wearing masks distancing it's really bizarre you know but at the same time um, we are we are trying to be careful and uh, and some people might even question well you're being too careful or the, the data doesn't doesn't support that you know one of the things about this uh, this eldership our staff as well as Dan mentioned we are we're not just looking locally we're not just looking at Washington um, we, are, we are scanning scientific uh, studies, uh, research, re, um, and diving into where there have been spreader events, uh, you know, locally in churches around the world, you know, and, and whether they're wearing masks and distancing, all those things. And, and I think one of the things that 
that you can see at a Faith Bible Church that's happened. We've been singing, we've been gathering 200 people per service. Uh, there have been zero events, COVID, of COVID from Faith, at Faith Bible Church. We do know that people in their own homes are, are getting COVID. And, uh, and it seems like it's a very steady number, um, but people are still being careful when they get it. They're getting tested and they're telling everybody uh, people are quarantining. But again, um, as a gathering, we've, we've yet experienced anything. And I, yeah, I think you could see why. Um, when you are following the arrows into the church and Jess is telling you to pull your mask over your nose, there's reasons why and we're sitting apart. So um, thanks for your patience. Thanks for your support. It's not what we desire. We want to be gathered back together without masks, smiling, encouraging one another as soon as we can. Um, but until then, pray. Pray for unity in the congregation and to be encouraged that we can minister to one another, love one another. Um, so, but please give feedback to us. We want to hear from you um, and we want to encourage you, support you in any way we can. Thanks so much.